What's going on you guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to downgrade an iPhone 5 all the way down to iOS 6 that's actually running iOS 7.0.2. So this phone here is running a very specific version of iOS 7. However, this tutorial should work for most iOS 7 versions. I'll have a list in the description box below. But the reason this works is simply due to an iBoot exploit. So by using this exploit, you'll be able to completely untether downgrade down to iOS 6, but it's also only specific to this iPhone 5 that's running iOS 7. Now to get this started, you will need a Mac computer that is running at least 10.13 High Sierra or newer. I haven't personally tried this on a more modern Mac that's running like Ventura for example. Um, so if someone wants to try that, be sure to comment down below, let me know what your results are. Uh, but yeah, as you guys can see here, this is the first link that's going to be in the description box below. It does outline which operating systems you need. Um, other operating systems like Linux are available, but I don't really have those at my disposal at this moment. Uh, so to get started, we're actually just gonna download this zipped file and we're gonna go ahead and save that to our desktop. And don't get confused by the file right above it. That was from the previous video that I made last year so we can just ignore that. Uh, but everything's gonna be inside of this folder and we are ready to then open up the terminal app which is gonna be an important first step uh, to actually making sure this tutorial ends up working. Now the first thing we want to do is go ahead and just drag this restore.sh file, hit enter, and then the script's gonna you know tell you a couple things. It might tell you that you downloaded it incorrectly, so that's completely fine. Just follow all the steps. In this case, I had to type in Y and then download the correct version, and then once again drag the restore.sh file back into terminal again, and uh, it's gonna ask us for the user password. This is the password that's associated locally with your computer, so this information is not gonna be sent anywhere, uh, but it will probably prompt you to install like some plugin from Apple in order to actually connect with the iPhone and this is going to be a good time to actually make sure your iPhone is connected to the computer and make sure you trust it with the computer and everything um, but other than that once that process is complete you're able to once again uh, copy that resource.sh file and your phone will be connected. Now the next step is going to be my personal favorite part. This is actually going to the second link, ipsw.me, and we're going to download the appropriate IPSW files. Uh, so this is basically the iOS version, but you're going to notice that there's two versions, the global and the GSM. If you look on the back of the phone, it actually shows you if you have A1428, it is going to be the GSM, but if you have the A1429 like I have here, it's going to be the global. Uh, so just make sure you guys download the correct file, otherwise the script will not work. In this case, we're going to download actually the firmware that we're currently on so 7.0.2 so once that is downloaded go ahead and drag that to your desktop and the second one's going to be the target firmware and this is going to be 6.1.4 the ios version that we want to go to and i recommend 6.1.4 because it was the last version of ios 6 so it is the most up-to-date technically by ios 6 standards so once that's done, the next step is actually going to be saving the SHSH blobs. And you guys are probably like, what exactly does that even mean? So basically an SHSH blob is a digital signature. Every single time your phone updates or downgrades for that matter, uh, it has to basically verify with Apple that it's allowed to actually downgrade or update. Um, so an SHSH blob will basically create that digital signature. And what's cool about iOS 7 is that it can actually fetch the signatures even though iOS 7 is no longer being signed as of today. And it's a really cool process, just make sure your phone is plugged into the computer. Um, and we're going to open up Terminal App once again, and you're going to actually notice here that I have these three other IPSWs in this folder. If you guys don't have these in here, it's perfectly fine. I actually did this tutorial before I filmed this video because I want to make sure it actually worked. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and just copy over that restore.sh file and make sure the phone is plugged in. We're going to have all these options, but we're we're going to be selecting number three and to do that just type in the number three and then we're actually going to be saving the onboard blob so type in number two and then we're going to type in number one to select the IPSW. So right now what we're basically doing is we're asking the phone to fetch the blobs from 7.0.2 and we have to select the 7.0.2 IPSW in this case. If your phone is running 7.0.4 for example then you obviously would have had to uh, download that appropriate IPSW but once that's done you will then have to once again press uh, number two and then hit enter. It's going to ask you all these different options. You want to make sure that your power button and home button is actually working because we're going to have to put this phone into DFU mode so make sure that is working. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of this video but that's going to be a crucial step. Uh, so to actually do that you know just press Y it's going to send the phone into recovery mode and that's basically when the phone 
you know, restarts on its own. So this is completely normal behavior. And then it should show the app logo in the little iTunes screen. So I'm going to show you guys this screen right here, but we're essentially going to put this into DFU mode. The script has all the instructions on how to do so, but essentially it's going to be a countdown. We hold the top and the home button for about 10 seconds. And as you guys can see, the script does count down for you approximately when you have to let go of the power button. So at around the one second mark, I let go of the power button and kept holding the home button. And yeah, there's still a timer there. So it's very easy uh, for you to know when you have to let go. And you'll know that the phone is in DFU mode when iTunes starts to pop up and you might hear like a USB connection noise. And uh, yeah, the phone is officially there. We're just gonna press number one, as you guys saw right there hit enter, and this is basically gonna save the SHSH blobs, the digital signatures that will actually need to downgrade this device to iOS 6 in the next step. So the script is basically gonna do everything that it needs and everything will be done in the background and your phone should automatically restart back to iOS 7. So it's pretty much good to go. Now the next step is actually gonna be downgrading this thing to iOS 6, but before we do that, I just wanna show you guys, when you go back into that folder, uh, that legacy folder that you basically downloaded, if you go into the saved folder and if you go into uh, SHSH, you'll actually see the blobs that are saved there. And you'll know that these were the most recent ones because they were created at about 7.34 p.m., so just a few minutes ago. Um, so just know where those are. I mean, they will be saved in that specific folder, uh, but it's always a good idea to double check. But yeah, go ahead and just copy over that restore.sh file once again. I know guys, it's a little annoying, but this has to be done. And then instead of clicking number three, we're actually gonna press number one to restore and downgrade. In this case, we're actually gonna select number three because we're using a special uh, 7.x blob that we basically pulled and this is gonna allow us to achieve that iOS 6. So now we have to essentially select the target IPSW. This is the IPSW that we want to go to. So it's gonna input us to select that. In this case, we want to go to 6.1.4. So that's the IPSW that we have to select. So just go ahead and click choose and the program's gonna do its thing. And then we'll have the option to select the base IPSW. So uh, press number two and hit enter and then select the 7.0.2 IPSW right over here. And then we just wanna click choose once again. Program's gonna do its thing in the background. And then the next step I think is gonna be asking, yeah, for, uh, for SH, SH blobs. So we're gonna type in the number three and then hit enter. And then the script should prompt you to select the SH, SH blobs that were saved a few minutes ago. So remember how I showed you guys they were in the saved folder. So just open up that original legacy folder go into saved and then go into SHSH. And uh, yeah, just double check it's the correct time to make sure this actually works and then hit choose. And uh, yeah, at that point you're ready to start the downgrade process. Uh, just make sure your phone is plugged in like I mentioned. Um, the phone needs to be plugged in for this entire process. And then we're gonna just type in number four, hit enter. And then once again, it's gonna ask us, uh, actually it's gonna ask us if you want a jailbreak. I highly recommend saying yes because um, when, uh, when iOS 6 is jailbroken, you have a lot more possibilities to install older apps and stuff like that. And then it's gonna ask us for the memory option. So if your Mac, I believe, has less than eight gigabytes of RAM, you wanna select no here. Uh, but in my case, you know, if I go into about this Mac, it actually tells me how much memory I have. So I have more than eight. So in this case, I'm going to be selecting the yes option. I think this is just the way that it kind of reads and writes with the device. And then the verbose boot option is when you turn on the device and it shows all of that weird text as it's booting up. I usually disable this because it looks really weird sometimes. I mean, it's a really cool feature, but to get that authentic iOS 6 experience, I personally would disable it. And then, you know, just make sure your home button and power button are working. So the same exact process that we did before, it's gonna send the device into recovery mode. So it's gonna restart it on its own and then the device will essentially boot up and it will show the Apple logo with the iTunes and everything. And then, uh, yeah, we're essentially ready to put this thing once again into DFU mode. So uh, hold the power button and the home button, get ready. So we're gonna go ahead and hold those two buttons for about 10 seconds. And like I mentioned, the script does have a very nice countdown feature. So it tells you exactly when to let go. So I usually let go around the one second mark. So once that one second is done, I'll let go. I was a little late right there, but kept holding on to the home button. And you will know if this is successful once iTunes pings itself, it detects that the phone is actually in DFU mode. And then, uh, yeah, this is where the magic happens. We are ready to downgrade. Uh, press number one, hit enter, and you guys are ready to be downgraded, completely untethered. 
this is such a cool process. The fact that this works uh, so many years later and the fact that the developer is still supporting this project to this day, like you can see updates are made like every few days on GitHub. So seriously, if they're watching this video, thank you so much for everything that you do. Like you're definitely bringing back a lot of nostalgia to us Apple collectors. So very, very nice to see. But yeah, guys, after a little bit of waiting and uh, waiting for this phone to actually boot up, it officially booted into iOS 6 and we are on the setup screen so cool to see this is obviously you know like the signature part of the video like you know just setting up ios 6. i went ahead and connected to my wi-fi here just made sure everything works and um you know once i was done i went through the entire setup process the phone did activate i actually did not need a sim card and that's very normal behavior with phones like these you can set it up as a new iphone for the sake of time we're actually just going to skip the apple id stuff and we're going to enable siri because i want to try that out in just a second and then we're not going to send the stuff and then start using iPhone. And as you guys can see, this phone is actually gonna come with Cydia because we chose the option to jailbreak it in the beginning and everything works perfectly fine. I do recommend you guys do that option because it's always annoying jailbreaking it when you already have the iOS version. But as you guys can see, we have Siri, so cool to see. We can even communicate with Siri and Siri still works. It actually stopped working for a pretty long time. But for some reason recently, Apple just started making Siri work once again on iOS 6. Um, so I'm not sure if someone watches my videos or maybe they decide to do some stuff in the background and we don't know about that, but it works right now and that's probably like the best part about this device. And uh, one thing I did want to mention though is that every single time you turn on this device, it's going to show the iOS 7 logo. And the reasoning behind this is because the phone is technically in an exploit mode. So it thinks that it's running iOS 7, even though it's running iOS 6. So that's one thing you technically cannot change because this is like built into the phone itself. And it's not really something that software can fix, but this is a good way to figure out, you know, if you're buying an iOS 6 iPhone, always ask the seller to turn it on and to see if that iOS logo appears because that's usually a good giveaway that it hasn't been manually downgraded but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you guys have any questions and i'll catch you guys on the next one peace